let's continue with option E, neurobiology and behavior, and move on to lesson two, E2, perception of stimuli. How does the body perceive stimuli? The answer lies in the five plus senses that we have, seeing, hearing, tasting, touching, and smelling. These are the ways that we receive stimulus into the body for processing. There's quite a variety of sensory receptors in the human body, and here we see a picture of a tongue, which uh, has many receptors for taste. Now looking over to the left, you'll see four terms, mechanoreceptors, chemoreceptors, thermoreceptors, and photoreceptors. And based on uh, the names of those terms, what type of receptor do you think the tongue is? Turns out that it's a chemoreceptor or a chemical receptor. Why? Because the receptors, which are the sensory neurons, which are embedded into the tongue, the way that they sense taste is by actually having molecules from the food that's being tasted dock onto their receptor sites, very similar to the way that neurotransmitter molecules dock onto um, receptors in a synapse. But not all receptors in the human body uh, detect what's going on around them by actually having a molecule dock on them. For example, mechanoreceptors in the ear sense vibration, and vibration is sort of the compression current of air. Thermoreceptors sense heat, and photoreceptors sense light. Let's take a tour of the human eye, which is an example of a photoreceptor. The IB curriculum would like you to know the different parts of the eye structure and what each of them does. The epithelial tissue, or the most external tissue surrounding the entire eyeball, is called the sclera. And in this picture, the sclera is gray. And you can see that it's surrounding the entire eye. If you look at the part of the sclera which covers the very front of the eye, the pupil and the lens, that's called the cornea. Just inside the sclera is a second layer of tissue called the choroid. And in this picture, it is yellow. Just inside the choroid, is the retina, which here is colored red. And that's the actual surface where the photoreceptors are and receive and sense the light rays that come through the eyeball. Underneath the cornea is a dome-shaped chamber filled with fluid called the aqueous humor. And behind or below the aqueous humor is the actual lens. This is a hard lens which focuses the light rays. Once the light rays go through the lens, they go through the core area of the eye called the vitreous humor, which is fluid filled. And then the light rays will hit the back of the eye on the retinal area. The fovea is a specific indentation in the retina where certain light beams are concentrated. To the left of the phobia, and this is also um, colored in red, is the optic nerve, which takes those initial sensory uh, neural impulses and transmits them directly into the brain. The place where the optic nerve um, does this creates a blind spot in the retina. Here are two diagrams that illustrate exactly how the photoreceptors embedded in the retina receive the signals. And I know they look a bit complicated, but let's take them piece by piece and kind of go through them. In this upper diagram here, you'll see an arrow which indicates the direction of the light traveling. So is the light coming from the top of the picture or the bottom of the picture? Based on the arrow, it's coming from the bottom of the picture. And what's what's seems a little complex here is that the light is, is actually streaming through all these physical structures 
until it gets to what, what's colored purple here, that pigment epithelial there, where it's actually received. So it's kind of, kind of as if there's all this scaffolding and structure, and the light actually has to weave its way through it until it reaches the retina, retinal layer. And then it goes through the mechanics and the structure of the photoreceptors. On the bottom picture, uh, same thing. You can see the direction of the light is uh, in such a way that it goes through all of these structures, then it hits the retina, and then it's sensed by the photoreceptors and processed backwards. Ultimately, the light is going to reach rod and cone cells, and you can see uh, that structurally, morphologically, they look a little bit different. Um, the rod cells detect light and dark, and the cone cells detect color. The way I remember this is I always picture an ice cream cone with a rainbow of ice cream scoops on top. So you have the cone, which has all the color, and then the rod cells, which are focusing more on black and white and dimness and brightness. Once the rod and the cone cells um, receive stimuli f um, from light rays, they send it through the sensory neurons to the back of the brain to an area called the visual cortex, which is located in the occipital lobe. And this is where the processing of visual stimuli takes place. It's one thing to sense light and dark, to sense color, but it's another thing to make sense of it and say, oh, that's a saber-toothed tiger running at me. That's where the visual processing takes place. Two terms uh, with regard to visual processing that IB wants you to be familiar with are edge enhancement, I'm sorry, edge enhancement, which refers to the ability to detect contrast or sharpness in a visual field, and contralateral processing, which basically means that when you see something in the left side of the visual field, in this case, uh, the picture shows something coming in from the left side uh, indicated by the color red, it's actually processed in the right hemisphere of your brain. And when you see something in the right hemisphere, which in this case is colored green, it turns out to be processed in the left hemisphere of your brain. And the reason why, if you look at the picture, is because when those light rays come through the lens of your eye, uh, they cross and then they actually are projected onto the back of your retina in the reverse direction that they originally came and entered into your eye. Moving on to the ear, which is a mechanoreceptor, the first thing to make note of in the structure of the ear is that there are three basic areas of the ear. The outer ear, or the external ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear, and each of these have a specific function. The outer ear is sort of the funnel or the receiving area of the sound, and it, it consists of the pinna, which is the outer folding of your ear. It consists of the auditory canal, which is the hole that goes into your ear, and it leads up to several structures which are in the middle ear starting with the ear drum. In this case the ear drum is blue. A uh, scientific name for the ear drum is the tympanum. And as air gets compressed through the um, auditory canal, those compressions will hit or strike the eardrum in the middle ear. And from there, the eardrum triggers a series of events that happens in three distinct bone areas. And you don't really need to know um, the names of the three different bone areas, but just know that it's sort of this domino effect that the eardrum leads to sort of this one, two, three punch of those ears, which ultimately cause um, a push or a pressure 
to occur on the cochlea, which is in the inner ear. And the cochlea kind of looks like a seashell or a spiral shape, and it's fluid-filled, and it has a lot of hairs inside. And based on the way that um, the pressure hits the cochlea, different hairs are hit at different times, and different um, auditory sensory nerves receive that message at different times and that is sent to the brain for processing. I do want to point out a structure above the cochlea in the inner ear called the semicircular canals. There are three of them and they also are fluid filled with interior hairs and those are the that's the area of the ear that's involved in your balance um, your sense of standing upright, and when you're feeling dizzy and nauseous, uh, it's because there are issues in the semicircular canal. Going through the structures of, let's talk about how each one functions. The eardrum itself senses external vibrations, and those vibrations are then picked up by the three sets of bones in the middle ear, the malleus, the incus, and the stapes, and they work in sync with each other to transmit that compression impulse into the inner ear. The hair cells inside the cochlea are attached to receptor cells, which are the very first nerves in the continuum of sensory neurons, which pick up the hearing, the hearing sensation. And they receive the vibrational stimuli and convert it into a neurological or an electrical impulse in the auditory nerve, which leads to the brain. And that's our quick wrap up of sensation uh, and specific types of receptors. This IB lesson focuses particularly on photoreception through the eye and mechanoreception through the ear, and it also uh, touches a bit on chemoreception, which happens through the tongue and also through the olfactory bulb in the nose.